I think we may need a magnifying glass for this one. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, I'm Stella, and I love making miniatures for Barbie's dollhouse using Millie cardstock. In today's video, I'll show you how to make super tiny furniture for a miniature dollhouse, and as always, I have a free printable template to help you make your own version. You'll find all the infos and the download link in the video, so now, let's begin! I'm gonna start from the best room in the house, also known as the kitchen. Cut this part of the template twice and attach the two sides together. As usual, I suggest using cardstock from all the packagings for this, since it's easy to cut and very sturdy. Repeat the same step for these parts, then cut this one four times and glue the pieces in pairs this way. Lastly, cut this part once. At this moment, we should have all these elements. Assemble them in this order to create the base of a kitchen counter. Now cut this part and glue all the pieces to the front of the counter, leaving a small space in the center. Color the resulting piece with acrylic paints, and just so you know, painting your fingers absolutely optional. You can skip that. To make a little oven, cut this part into metallic cardstock. I use the lid of a food container, but you can also use aluminum foil or gift wrap. Glue this piece to the front of the counter right here, then cut this into copy paper and paint it with black nail polish. Alternatively, you can paint it with a black marker and coat it with a clear varnish. Attach the resulting piece on top of the silver part. Then use a fine tip black marker to draw some small details to the top of the oven. To make the countertop, cut this part two or three times and stack all the layers together. If you're using my fruit principle template, I would advise you use a needle or an awl to pierce this little hole. Now the cardstock I used was already in the right color, but I still set it paint the edge white to make it appear more even. Coat the surface with some clear nail polish to make it shiny. Then cut this part into copy paper and glue it to the bottom of the countertop. Next, take a piece of metal wire or a jewelry pin and bend it to give it this sort of U shape. Cut it like this with one end longer than the other and slide it into this little hole in the countertop. To add a cute extra detail, we can paint a small dot on the sink to mimic the drain and two more dots to the sides of the faucet in place of the knobs. Attach the countertop to the counter. Then cut this little rectangle and paint it with black nail polish. Glue the resulting piece to the countertop, aligned with the oven. We can now start working on the range hood. Cut this part 3 or 4 times and attach all the layers together. Then cut this part twice, glue two sides together and attach it to the previous piece. Paint the range hood with acrylic paints, this way. To make a tiny fridge, cut this part four times and attach the elements in pairs. Repeat the same step for this part, then cut this one twice. At this point, we should have all these parts. Assemble them in this order. Next, cut this part into cardstock and glue the two pieces to the front of the fridge. And just a reminder, if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette cutting machine, you can use my digital templates, which you can find in my shop, linked in the description box. Color the little fridge with acrylics. Then take a piece of wire or an eye pin, cut it into two small parts, and glue them to the fridge's doors to mimic the handles. Finally, coat the fridge with a gloss varnish or clear nail polish. We can now start working on the living room. To make a little mid-century style sofa, cut this part twice and glue the two sides together. Repeat the same step for this part, then attach the two resulting pieces like this. Next, cut this part twice, glue the pieces in pairs, then attach them to the sides of the sofa. To make the seat, cut this four times, and once again glue the layers in pairs. Attach the final pieces to the sofa, then color it with acrylic paints. I tried to mimic a sort of tufted pattern on the back, but I have to admit I'm not too fond of how it turned out. To make the sofa's legs, take a couple of toothpicks, cut their tips, and glue them to the bottom of the sofa. I also decided to paint them in a slightly darker brown shade. To make a cute little throw pillow, cut this strip into copy paper, fold it like this, and glue two ends to create a sort of flattened ring. Paint the pillow with acrylic paints, and I ended up making three of them, because I think they're so cute! And as always, you can find a short list of all the supplies I used for this project in the description. Glue the pillows to the sofa this way. 
To make a teeny tiny armchair, cut this part a couple of times and stack the layers together. If you're using my free principle template, I suggest you cut a simple square and then use a nail file to round the top corners. Repeat the same process for this part, then attach the two pieces together to make the seat of our little armchair. Pin it with acrylics. Then cut this part and color it in a light shade of brown. Glue the legs to the seat, this way. Then paint some stripes in a darker shade of brown to mimic the look of wood. I suggest doing this once the legs are glued in place, as it's easier to hold them. Now, at this point, I realized that the armchair looked ginormous compared to the sofa, so I remade it a little bit smaller. And you'll find a smaller size in the template. To make a little TV, cut this part and attach the two pieces like this. Paint them black. Then print this part, cover it with a piece of clear tape and glue it to the front of the little TV. To make a little TV stand, cut this two or three times and stack the layers together. To make the legs, cut this part and attach it to the previous one. Next, cut these two tiny rectangles and glue them to the front of the table. Lastly, cut this part. We'll have to glue it to the rest of the TV stand, but first we're gonna color it with acrylics, as it's easier to paint the two pieces separately. Once the paint has dried, attach the little shelf to the table. Finally, glue the TV to its stand. And because I'm eternally undecided, in this moment I decided to paint the two drawers in a darker brown color. To make a small rug, cut this into copy paper and paint it with a simple pattern of your choice. I decided to use colored pencils, since I think they leave a nice texture on the paper, which kinda looks like a rug, if you squint your eyes and look from afar, but still. <laughs> to make a dining table, cut this part twice and angle the two sides together. Then cut this part, and I actually cut it into lightweight cardstock, stacking a couple of layers together, as I found it difficult to cut this shape into that thicker type of cardstock I had used until now. Attach the legs to the top of the table, then color the resulting piece with acrylics. I used the lighter brown shade for the base. Then I painted some streaks in a darker color, and finally covered the table's top with nail polish to make it shiny. To make a dining chair, cut this part and glue the two layers together. Then cut this into lightweight cardstock, bend the left and right sides this way, and glue the final piece to the previous one. Paint the chair seat with acrylics. Then cut this part and color it with brown acrylic paint. Glue the legs to the seat of the chair. And I ended up making four identical chairs. We can now start working on the bathroom. To make a little bathtub, cut this part twice and attach the two sides together. Then cut this into a lightweight cardstock and glue it to the base, starting from the center and then moving to the sides. I suggest brushing a little bit of water on the cardstock to make it softer and easier to shape. Paint the tiny bathtub with a coat of acrylic gesso first and then with a layer of clear nail polish to give it a glossy, porcelain-like finish. Next, take a piece of metal wire and bend it to give it this shape. Glue it to one side of the bathtub, this way. Then paint two little silver dots inside the tub to mimic the overflow and drain. To make a little toilet, cut this part twice and glue two sides together. Next, cut this part into lightweight cardstock, press it up and down against the handle of a small paintbrush to give it a slightly curved shape, and finally glue it to this part, cut into a heavier cardstock. You should end up with this. Glue this piece to the back of the toilet, then cover everything with white acrylic paint and clear nail polish. To make a bathroom sink, cut this part four times and attach the layers in pairs. Repeat the same process for this part, and then cut these ones. At this moment, you should have all these pieces. Assemble them like this. Cover the finished piece with acrylic gesso. Then cut these two tiny rectangles and glue them to the front of the little cabinet. Paint them in a contrasting color. Then cut this strip into lightweight cardstock and fold it along these dashed lines. Glue the resulting piece to the top of the cabinet. 
then coat it with clear nail polish to give it a porcelain-like finish. I also decided to cover the two front drawers with a touch of gloss varnish to make them look a little bit shiny. Finally, I used a piece of metal wire to create a little faucet. We can now be working on the bedroom. To make a little bed, cut this part 5 or 6 times and glue all the layers together. The final piece should be roughly 4 mm in thickness. Paint it white. Then cut this part into copy paper and glue it to the base of the bed. Bend the sides like this. Then stick them to the base with a few dots of white glue. Color the duvet with acrylic paints. Then cut this part and attach it to the rest of the bed this way. Next cut this part, glue it to the duvet and paint it in a contrasting color. I also decided to draw two white lines along the top and bottom edge of this little blanket. Now cut this part, paint it with acrylics and glue it on top of the smaller blanket. Use a pair of tweezers to pinch the sides of the blankets. To make them appear more three-dimensional, to make a couple of pillows, cut these tiny strips into copy paper and paint them on both sides. Just as we did for the sofa's pillows, glue the strips so that they form a little flat ring, and then attach them to the bed. Once again, I use my tweezers to pinch the paper and give the pillows a sort of scrunched up look. Next, cut this part, connect its ends to form a little ring, then glue its sides to make another little throw pillow. Glue it to the bed, and if you want, you can paint it with a simple design like this one. Now cut this part twice and glue two sides together. Then cut this part and attach it to the previous one to make a small bed bench. Paint it with acrylics, using a light brown shade for the base and a darker shade to add more depth. And this is kinda optional, but I have fun embellishing this little bench with a couple of books, made with two tiny pieces of cardstock, and a small vase that's really a bead painted with acrylics. To make a wardrobe, cut this four times and glue layers in couples. Repeat the same process for these parts, and at this point we should have these six elements. Assemble them this way. Next, cut this part twice and attach the two sides to the front and back of our little wardrobe. Then cut this and glue three elements to the wardrobe's front side to make a drawer and two doors. Color the wardrobe with acrylic paints. And I suggest using a darker color to paint the doors and drawer to make them pop. Finally, paint three tiny dots in place of the handles. To make another little rug, draw a simple design with colored pencils on this part, cut into copy paper. To make a tiny crib, cut this part two or three times, glue the layers together, then paint one side in a light color like pink or baby blue and the opposite side in a light brown shade. Next, cut this part four times and attach the layers in pairs. Repeat the same step for this part, then paint them all in a light brown color. And I actually kept one of these white, as I wanted a little contrast between the front and the back of the crib. At this moment, we should have all these elements. Let's assemble them in this order. Up next, yup, I simply couldn't resist making this one. To make one yourself, cut all these parts into a lightweight type of cardstock and assemble them this way. Then cut these parts and attach them to the rest of the dollhouse's base. Lastly, paint the roof, and if you're brave enough, you can paint some details on the facade. As promised, here's the link to the free printable template, and if you want to take a deep dive in the world of miniature dollhouses, I suggest you watch this playlist next. And this is all for today's video, until next time, bye!